If you're anything like me, I started Dying Light 2 not knowing anything about the game. There's so many things in the game that aren't exactly made explicit, and I wish I knew some of them sooner. If you're not exactly a beginner, but wouldn't call yourself a pro, then today we're going to be going over some advanced tips and tricks that are going to help you reach that pro level. The expert grappling setting is one that can be toggled on and off. This setting allows you to set up a separate key binding for the grappling hook. So it means you don't have to rely on having the grappling hook in your inventory equipped, instead you can use another key binding in order to trigger it. If you're someone who's constantly using things like throwables such as grenades, mines and all that, then it just makes it so much easier to use the grappling hook. If you're finding yourself struggling to take out bosses or legendary encounters, then the toughness booster is the best thing you can have. A fully upgraded toughness booster is probably the best thing you can have for damage resistance in the game. It's so powerful that I would say it probably makes you almost godlike. You can take a beating from almost anything in the game and you will probably take minimal damage from all hits. I tend to find myself using this a lot for legendary encounters in order to make sure that I don't die. So a while back there actually were some fixes that went through with the grappling hook. So now the game doesn't actually allow you to use the grapple hook multiple times in order to gain more distance or more height. But did you know if you're actually trying to go vertically up a building, you can grapple up and then do a wall run and then grapple again. Every single time you do a wall run, it actually resets the value of the grappling hook, meaning that you would get that first initial boost that you would get every single time after you do a wall run. There's plenty of mods in this game and as a beginner I'm sure it's very confusing on knowing what is actually the best. Personally, I would recommend the Spark mod, it's probably the most reliable and high damage mod you can use in the game. You can actually get this quite early on from the bazaar by doing a side quest, so getting it early on and then upgrading this is probably one of the best choices you can make. You might be wondering what exactly is the difference between artifact and legendary weapons? Well other than legendary weapons usually having a bit more of base damage, if you look at artifact weapons, there's only 3 bonus stat boosts that come with it, with legendary there's actually 4. If you're looking for an easy uncommon trophy farm, come to this location. Just note that you must complete the side quest Renegades for this to actually work. By standing on this bridge close to UV lights while a chase is going on, virals will actually spawn out of the door. The UV lights in the room will actually burn them, so basically you can have a massive farm build up. I would probably never recommend that you equip the reinforcement mod. With the addition of the Korok charm, you can basically infinitely repair any weapon you want. The reason why the empowerment mod is so much better is obviously since you can infinitely repair your weapons, getting that additional 50 to 60 damage is a must. So if you're looking to create the best weapon you can possibly create, then definitely go for the empowerment mod. Stop wasting your time with making medkits. They're seriously one of the worst healing items in the game. Not only are they slow when healing you, but they barely heal any of your health. With maxed out health, I find myself having to use 2-3 to three of these every single time. Not only are they more expensive than regeneration boosters, but regeneration boosters heal so much more. Yes, they do take a little bit more time to actually heal up your health, but these actually have a duration. So if you take any more damage while this duration is going, it'll actually heal it up for you. You can actually mess around with the humans and fake hits on them. If you go to attack and actually block to cancel the hit right before it hits the enemy, then the enemy will sometimes freak out and actually move back or block. When you hold down any of the item wheels, such as the weapons or throwables, it'll actually slow down time. Now if you're in need of natural supplies such as poppies, then I recommend using the barber shop on St. Paul Island. She sells plenty of supplies that are very essential for creating things like healing supplies and boosters, and one of the most useful supplies in this game, poppies, which are used for a lot of the boosters, are sold here. If you're someone who's completed the Dying Light 2 story and you're actually interested in going back and completing more things, I would recommend just starting a new game plus. By starting a new game plus, you can get the 20 additional inhibitors that the game adds, and it just means that if you decide to go and complete all the Night Runner trials and explore, then all that is just going to get wiped out if you ever decide to start a new game plus later on. Ammunition such as arrows and bolts can only stack up to a max of 60, and it kind of restricts you from being able to store a lot of Whereas crafting supplies and trophies can stack up to a max of 9,999. It just means that it really limits the amount of ammunition that you can actually hold at a time. So my advice is I would probably only keep the ammunition that you know that you need inside your inventory. If you find yourself falling from a massive height for some reason, and you can't seem to find any bin bags or cars to land on, you can actually use the grappling hook and hook a wall right before you're about to hit the ground in order to stop it. If you find yourself being annoyed by howlers a lot during the night, if you drop a UV bar next to a howler, it actually prevents them from screaming and stopping a chase. Drowners and suiciders are seriously some of the most annoying enemies in the game. I find myself just running around the city and always getting blown up by these guys and attracting a lot of unwanted attention. One of the best counters that I've found is actually the Pen of Destiny. All it takes is one hit and then it'll explode them. 
One of the easiest ways to take out bigger enemies or bosses is actually to do circles around them while attacking. Especially whenever you get into any boss fights during the main story, I actually find it so easy just to walk around the boss and swing at them. Usually the attacks they do take a little bit of time to actually target you. So by the time they target you and then do the attack, you've already moved position. If you're using a throwable such as a grenade or mine, you can actually hold down the throwable button and it'll bring up a visualization of where the throwable is actually going to land. The biggest weakness that Dying Light 2 actually has in a lot of its boss fights is that it places furniture and things in the room that you can actually hit the boss behind. I know that certain bosses in the game such as Waltz can't actually be drop kicked because he won't move, however there are plenty of other bosses in the game that can actually get drop kicked. Now my best tip is you can actually drop kick the bosses behind furniture. Not only does this work with bosses but it also works with normal enemies such as humans. If these enemies find themselves stuck behind furniture and can't actually get up the game automatically just kills them meaning that you can pretty much win a boss fight within a matter of 5 seconds. I know this video was a bit shorter, but hopefully you guys will learn something that you didn't know before. I'm hoping some of these tips will actually help you build your skills up and make you a bit better at this game. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the video guys, and I'll see you all next time.